やっと面白くなった。Don't lose It's Brian. Today we're sculpting edgy, half naked, scissor sword gal Ryuko Matoi from Trigger's Kill a Kill. We'll be trying to recreate the shot of the first time we ever see Ryuko standing at the foot of the school. Yes, fully clothed. We'll start by pulling in a sketch that I did in Photoshop and sizing it down to a rigify armature to get it to scale. Then we'll start blocking out the character using subdivided cubes one for the head and another for the face. We'll apply the subdiv to the face so that we'll have enough geometry to push and pull in sculpt mode to get it closer to the reference sketch. Adding more subdivided cubes will block out the body, adding loop cuts wherever we need more vertices to manipulate in order to get the shape to match the reference. We'll continue this throughout the rest of the body, matching up the shapes with the reference in both front and side views. When we get to the hands, we'll keep it simple and just throw in a shape for the palms. No need to model any fingers since her hands are going to end up in her pockets. Once we're finished blocking out, we'll join all the shapes that make up the body by selecting them and pressing Ctrl J. Then in sculpt mode, we'll remesh them so they'll all become one piece of geometry. Then we can use the smooth brush to smooth out all the transitions. Next, we can refine the body and add some detail. And since she's fully clothed and a lot of her is going to be covered up, the only real details that's going to matter here is her neck and her legs. But I'll go ahead and sculpt the butt anyways because I, I just can't resist sculpting a butt. Moving on to the head. We'll join the head and the face shapes together by remeshing them, then start shaping the front and the sides of the face to our reference. Flatten out the sides of the head a bit and make the back of the head just a bit wider than the front. To make the ear, I added a plane and subdivided it to get enough verts to pull it into a rounder shape. Then add a subdivision surface modifier and a solidify modifier. After getting it placed, I applied the modifiers and remeshed it to a higher resolution so I'd have enough geometry to push the ear in and carve some details. For the eyes, I carved out the sockets using clay strips and dropped in a sphere. Instead of sculpting the eyelids, I duplicated the spheres and removed a few of the center loops, then used a solidify modifier to give them some thickness. Using clay strips, we'll build up the nose and kind of bump out a spot that we're going to carve into the mouth. Using draw sharp, pinch and elastic deform we can create some hard plane changes and shape the face a bit more. For the lips we start roughing them out with draw sharp to carve the mouth and pulling the lips out by holding control while using draw sharp. If more geometry is needed, remesh and smooth then continue on with refining the lips. Now that we finally have all the parts we need to have a face, we can start refining them into the shapes, sizes and places that we want them to be in. Remember to orbit around and check your silhouette from different angles, and once you're happy with your eyes and lid placement, join the lids to the rest of the head and remesh to combine them and sharpen up your creases. Oh, and uh, don't forget to join the ear in as well. Alright, so instead of going through manual retopology, I'm just going to run the sculpt through quad remesher to get the poly count down so I can rig and pose and UV this thing. And uh, yeah, quad remesher, it is a paid add-on. But it does have a free 30-day trial, which is plenty enough time to use it and realize how much time it saves you before you eventually buy it. And I know 60 bones is a pretty steep price for a broke dude, but consider it took me nearly six hours to retopo my last model. I feel like it's worth it to save the time on these one-off sculpts that won't get reused. Moving on. With Rigify enabled, add a basic human rig, which is the rig that doesn't have any hands or facial bones, since we don't need them. Line up your bones to the mesh, auto-generate the rig, then parent the head and the body to the rig with automatic weights. Go into pose mode and test to see if everything is moving around okay. I noticed that her jaw was deforming when moving the head, so I had to jump into weight paint mode and hunt down the vertex group that I needed to remove the jaw from. But from here we go into pose mode and try to mimic the reference. It's a really quick and simple pose to get her into, but once we have it, with the rig selected, we can jump back into T-Pose by clicking on Rest Position in Object Data Properties. Next, we'll bring back our sculpt details by adding a multi-res modifier and subdividing it a few times, then adding a shrink wrap modifier. Use project as the wrap method, click the negative box and choose our head sculpt as the target and apply it. Depending on how much you refined and smoothed out your sculpt will determine how much cleaning up you'll have to do now. I personally didn't go too far into rendering out the sculpt so I'm making a pass over the head, smoothing out rough spots and sharpening up my creases. Now I've added a single vert and extruded it along the eyelid with snapping turned on. 
then disabled snapping, extruded it outward, lifted it up a bit, added a subsurf to smooth it a little bit, and solidify to thicken it. Eyebrows were made the same way, single vert, extrude around, then extrude up, subdivision for smoothness, solidify for thickness, and I moved it around just a little bit on the head with a shrink wrap enabled so it wouldn't clip into the head while I was doing that. To make her button up shirt, I selected some of the mesh from the body in the shape of a shirt and duplicated it, then separated it into its own mesh, then extruded the bottom down, added an edge loop and scaled it to fit it over her hips, then control B to bevel and smooth it out. I extruded and scaled the top loop up, then back down to create the collar, then adjusted it in sculpt mode using the grab and elastic deform brushes. Somewhere in there I added a solidify and subsurf modifier. Uh, if you select the armature and click on posed position, the model will jump back into the pose that we made earlier. And you'll notice that the shirt went into the pose as well without us weighting it to the rig. That's because when we duplicated the geometry, it also copied the rig weights. It's not perfect, but it will get us close enough to move them into place later. Making her jacket's almost the same as making her shirt, only we make it a little larger and baggy. For the elastic parts, we grab the edge loops and duplicate and extrude them at a solidify, but not have them as thick as the jacket. I made her skirt the same way that I made Suyu's skirt from the Froppy Sculpt. Uh, add a circle, then check her select from the select menu, scale it and twist it, subdivide and then pull it back out, then extrude up and scale down to the waist. Using loop tools, relax the top loop and fit it to the waist with the grab or elastic to form. Add a loop cut around her hip area and scale it out to where there isn't any clipping. Then bevel the loop to smooth it and clean up any remaining clipping with the elastic deform brush. I tried adding the skirt to the rig with automatic weights, but when testing it out, it didn't really go so well. So I tried weight painting to a few different bones and that didn't work out too great either. So eventually I just decided to unparent the skirt from the rig totally and just rotate it into place. To make the hair, I added a curve and shaped it into a triangle to use as a bevel reference then started adding more curves to fill out her bangs. Since the rest of her hair is symmetrical enough, I filled in only half of the rest of her hair and mirrored it to the other side, then duplicated the hair on the back of the head and scaled it down to add another layer so it seems like she has more volume. And after all the hair is finished, we parent them to the head bone so it moves with the head. After doing a few touch-ups like sharpening the knees and planing the face, Let's go back into the pose position so we can start getting all of our elements into their final positions. Using Elastic Deform, I'm trying to make the clothes relax onto her a little bit better while fixing any clipping issues with her shirt and skirt. A few more touch-ups on her face, then we move to her lips and move them around just a little bit to give her an I don't care look, which is super edgy. <gasps> Okay, let's add a cube and start modeling the scissor case. Try and match the size, then bevel the edges. Add a few loop cuts and extrude inwards to make the recessed spaces. Duplicate the geometry created in the corners from the beveling we did earlier. Separate and solidify them and that will become our corner guards. So angle this thing on her back and adjust her skirt so it touches it but doesn't clip through it. Add a curve to make the strap. I'm using a rectangle as my bevel reference. Start wrapping the strap around her. If you need more points to control, select two verts, right click and select subdivide. That will make everything a little bit easier to move around. I inserted a cube and modeled it into a Tetris T block, then added a bevel to create these strap connectors. Next I added in a plane and sculpted it into place to make a pocket, then duplicated and placed it on the other side and I almost forgot about her shoes. So select the rig and go back into rest pose so we can have symmetry back. By selecting verts from the body mesh and duplicating and extracting them like we've been doing, we can create all the parts we need to make the shoe. But once you're finished, add a mirror modifier to all the parts that created the shoe uh, and that will make our other shoe. But be sure to apply all the mirror mods or the mirrored shoe won't pose correctly with the rig. Let's start adding details to the jacket by adding a multi-res and subdividing it a couple times. Use draw sharp to start pulling and pushing folds and use pinch to sharpen edges. If you accidentally dig too deep and start clipping, you can puff the jacket back out with a little bit of the inflate brush. And we'll do the same thing with the shirt by 
adding a multi-res to it. So dividing it a few times and adding a few creases on the collar and a couple on the front where her shirt is showing. Don't worry about the parts where it's covered up because you're not going to see them. And to finish up the modeling portion, we'll make the bow by adding in a subdivided cube and squashing it thin. Then shape it to be more triangular. Duplicate it around to the other side. Um, a few more subdivided cubes. Uh, to make the knot and the tails of the bow and we are done modeling. Now we can move on to the materials. To make a basic shader for the skin we're going to add an ambient occlusion node and attach it to a color ramp then on to the principal BDSF. Uh, you can change the colors of the sliders to your skin colors. The left side of the gradient is going to be the colors for the shadows and the right side is going to be the colors for the highlights. You can add more color points in between to control the fall offs or crunch colors a little bit more. Uh, if you want to further tweak things you can add a hue saturation and a brightness contrast node after the color ramp and then connect those on into the principal BDSF. I duplicated this material and changed the color values for the clothes and the hair and uh, tweaking around a little bit in the principal BDSF with uh, like the the roughness slider and stuff like that so you can have different materials that have different looks and react to light a little bit differently. I went into Photoshop and traced the logo on her jacket and then saved it as a ping or PNG with a transparent background. Then in the material for the jacket I added an image node and hooked the color into the second slot of a mix RGB and the alpha into the factor then hooked the tail of the color ramp into the first slot. Click new on the image texture node and choose the size that you want to use, but make sure that alpha is clicked. Now in texture paint mode, create a new brush and under texture choose stencil and the texture properties. Open the PNG of the logo that we made in Photoshop. You can move the stencil with right click, rotate and scale it by holding either control or shift while using right click and when you get it placed, left click will paint your texture. My stencil is looking a little low res when I paint it and that's when I realized that I forgot to UV unwrap the jacket. So I go into edit mode and select some edges, make some scenes before unwrapping. I did the same thing for the face so that I could paint the lips, darken around the eyes and add just a bit of pink to the cheeks. So to finish up, I added stickers to her case by using import image as plane, adding a bit more geometry, then shrink wrapping them to the case. And there it is, Ryuko from Kill a Kill. If you made it this far and enjoyed the process and want to explore the blend file, you can download it from my Gumroad for free. Change the lightings or make some renders change the sculpt, whatever you want to do. I'm on Instagram as Brand Sculpts and on Twitter as Nasaki. If you like these kind of sculpts and breakdowns, then good, because that's what I like to do, and that's what I'm doing now. One last, last thing. Um, a few of you are asking for a full start-to-finish tutorial, and uh, the thing is, these sculpting videos are recordings of things that I'm trying to learn in on my days off, on the weekend. Uh, then the video is edited the next weekend, so between family and my day job, that's why I only do around two a month. But I'm currently trying to work out the best way I can make a series of tutorial videos from, for, from a uh, new user's perspective. Like, um, I guess I'd be teaching the specific information that I spent the time to hunt down and learn that relates specifically to my workflow so you wouldn't have to do the legwork. Uh, it's like all the information that you need to do whatever you want to do is out there for Blender. Um, it's just in different places and some of them is hard to find and uh, uh, some of them are just in weird spots uh, that has nothing to do with character uh, uh, creation and stuff like that. But the idea is to give you a specified tutorial series focused on my workflow. Uh, I don't know, uh, like I said, I'm still working on it. Um, if you're still here at this point in the video, man, thanks thanks for walk, uh, watching. You're, you're a real trooper and I, I really appreciate you listening to my rambling. So, uh, I'll see you in the next sculpt. Thanks, thanks again, bye.